From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Monday, September 26, 2022. London police arrest 17-year-old hackers suspected of Uber and GTA 6 breaches. The City of London Police on Friday revealed that they have arrested a 17-year-old from Oxfordshire on suspicion of hacking. The department said the arrest was made as part of an investigation in partnership with the UK National Crime Agency's Cybercrime Unit. No further details about the nature of the investigation were disclosed, although it is suspected that the law enforcement action may have something to do with the recent string of high-profile hacks aimed at Uber and Rockstar Games. Both the intrusions are alleged to have been committed by the same threat actor who goes by the name Teapot, also as Teapot Uber Hacker. Uber, for its part, has pinned the breach on an attacker or attackers that it believes is associated with the Lapsus extortion gang, two of whom are facing fraud charges. According to cybersecurity company Flashpoint, the real-world identity of the hacker behind the two incidents is said to have been outed on an online illicit forum. Microsoft SQL Servers Hacked in Target Company Ransomware Attacks Vulnerable Microsoft SQL Servers are being targeted in a new wave of attacks with Fargo ransomware, security researchers are warning. Bleeping Computer reported similar attacks in February, dropping Cobalt Strike beacons, and in July when threat actors hijacked vulnerable Microsoft SQL servers to steal bandwidth for proxy services. The latest wave is more catastrophic, aiming for a quick and easy profit by blackmailing database owners. Security researchers at Anlab Security Emergency Response Center says that Fargo is one of the most prominent ransomware strains that focus on MSSQL servers along with Globe Imposter. This malware has been referred to as Malox, M-A-L-L-O-X, in the past because it used to append the .malox extension to the files it encrypts. Attackers impersonate CircleCI platform to compromise GitHub accounts. GitHub is warning of an ongoing phishing campaign targeting its users to steal credentials and two-factor authentication codes by impersonating the CircleCI DevOps platform. The company learned of the attacks against its users on September 16th, and it pointed out that the phishing campaign has impacted many victim organizations except GitHub. Phishing messages claim that a user's CircleCI session has expired and then attempts to trick recipients into logging in using GitHub credentials. The company pointed out that the accounts protected by hardware security keys are not vulnerable to this attack. Agencies don't know what sensitive data new IT systems collect on Americans, according to the GAO. More than two decades after having been tasked with establishing privacy programs, 14 federal agencies have failed to address key practices for protecting the sensitive personal data of Americans. This according to a new Government Accountability Office report. Agencies that have failed to implement full privacy plans include the Office of Personnel Management, which was the target of a data breach in 2015 that exposed the sensitive personal information of more than 20 million government employees. Agencies that have not developed a full privacy strategy include the Departments of Agriculture, Defense, Justice, Homeland Security, Housing and Urban Development, Veterans Affairs, State, Treasury, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Office of Personnel Management. In addition, the U.S. agency that maintains and modernizes the country's nuclear stockpile was criticized in the same report for, quote, lackluster cybersecurity policies that endangered both IT and operational technology networks, end quote. Thanks to today's episode sponsor, Votero. Can you trust that your content and data is free of malware and ransomware? With Votero, you can. Votero removes evasive and unknown malware from content in milliseconds without impacting file fidelity or usability. It even works on password-protected and zip files, and plus it's an API so it integrates with everything, including Microsoft 365. Learn more at votero.com. That's V-O-T-I-R-O dot com. VPN providers flee India as a new data law takes hold. As of yesterday, Sunday, India's Computer Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT, C-E-R-T, a body appointed by the Indian government to deal with cybersecurity and threats, will require VPN operators to collect and maintain customer information, including names, email addresses, and IP addresses, for at least five years, even after they have cancelled their subscription or account. 
Last year, India became the country with the highest rate of growth in the use of VPN services worldwide. During the first half of 2021, almost 350 million VPNs were installed, showing a 671% jump in growth when compared to the same period in 2020. The massive growth can be attributed to continuous internet shutdowns, a rise in digital scams, and the need for Indians to protect themselves online. As a result, VPN companies from across the globe have pulled their services out of the country in a bid to protect their users' privacy. Microsoft's new security chief looks to AI to fight hackers. In a Q&A interview with Bloomberg, newly installed ex-Amazon.com cloud computing executive Charlie Bell shares his plans to use AI to fight hackers. He states that people in cybercrime are, quote, innovating to break everything you build. Every time we take a step forward in security, there's somebody out there scratching their head saying, well, what do I do to get around that? How do I break that? End quote. Analogizing the situation to a soccer game where the other side is cheating, it's time, he says, to, quote, shrink the goal down to just about the size of the soccer ball and stretch the field out to be 20 miles long. End quote. The full interview is available at Bloomberg. American Airlines learns it was breached from phishing targets. Following up on a story we brought you last week, American Airlines now says its cybersecurity response team found out about a recently disclosed data breach from the targets of a phishing campaign that was using an employee's hacked Microsoft 365 account. The investigation also revealed the attacker accessed multiple employees' accounts, also compromised via phishing attacks, and used them to send more phishing emails to targets that American has not yet disclosed. The company added that the team members' accounts also provided access to employee files stored on the SharePoint cloud-based service. Through this investigation, American was able to determine that the unauthorized actor used an IMAP protocol to access the mailboxes. And now, last week in ransomware. This past week saw some embarrassment for the LockBit ransomware operation when their programmer leaked a ransomware builder for the LockBit 3.0 encryptor. The LockBit 3.0 ransomware builder makes it easy for any would-be threat actor to roll out their own operation simply by modifying the enclosed configuration file to use custom ransom notes. Other research last week shows how the Black Matter ransomware gang continues to evolve its operation by upgrading its Black Cat data exfiltration tool for double extortion attacks, and ransomware attacks were noted at the New York Racing Association and a New York ambulance service, as well, of course, the Microsoft SQL servers, Maalox ransomware, mentioned at the start of this newscast. A reminder to join us this week for a very special Super Cyber Friday. Our topic of discussion will be Hacking the CISO Series. We're turning four years old. Join us to meet all the people behind the CISO Series, including 14 guests, all the hosts and reporters for the CISO Series podcast, Defense in Depth, and Cybersecurity Headlines, including yours truly. This will be followed by the CISO Series' fourth anniversary game show and networking meetup and online party. This will be a great chance to mingle with the hosts and the people who work behind the scenes here at CISO Series. So head on over to CISOseries.com and click on our events drop-down to register for all the fun. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.